This song, this beat, is Chad Smith 101. Hello there, my name is Will and welcome along to another What's That Groove where I break down drum beats from some of the world's biggest artists. And in today's lesson, we're taking a look at the song Black Summer by the Red Hot Chili Peppers because the Chili Peppers are back and very importantly, so is John Frusciante, one of my favourite ever guitarists, is back in the band. But don't worry, I'm not here to talk about guitars. I'm here to talk about drums. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna be giving you a step-by-step -step guide of how to play the verse beat that Chad Smith plays in that song, Black Summer. Not only that, but I'm also gonna be showing you by how learning this particular drum beat is gonna unlock so many other beats and so many other songs from the extensive back catalog of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. This song, this beat, is Chad Smith 101. So let's get into it. Now the drum beat and rhythm that you hear being used in this song is probably one that's quite familiar to your ears, particularly if you are a Red Hot Chili Peppers fan. In fact, it's not used in just loads of Chili Pepper songs, it's used in so many different genres of music all the time, it's probably one that you're quite familiar with hearing. I'd say that the most effective and best way to learn this groove is still step by step. I think that you'll gain a greater dynamic control and a wider rhythmic vocabulary by learning each step at a stage at a time. And that will help us in the long run get closer to achieving that Chad Smith sound. So to begin with, let's look at where the bass drums and the backbeat sound and how we count this thing out. On the hi-hat, we're gonna be counting in eighth notes, which means we're gonna count one and two and three and four and. And our back beats, these are the snare drums that are gonna land at the same time as our right hand, they're gonna land on beats two and four. The bass drums are gonna land on beats one and also on the and of three. So that's the first hi-hat and the sixth hi-hat of your drum beat. So we're going. Now if you can, you're going to want to be able to play that drum beat on loop and be able to think of what you're having for dinner at the same time as playing it because that would mean that you're really comfortable with that bass drum pattern and you're ready to move on to stage two. The good news is, is that by learning that bass drum pattern already, you've learned and unlocked the foundation of another Chili Peppers song because this is the same bass drum pattern that Chad Smith uses in the song Other Side from the Californication album. The next step is to add in more extra left hands to add greater syncopation to the drum beat. The difference is that these left hands aren't gonna land at the same time as your right hand, but rather they're gonna be landing in between them. And at this stage, we're only adding in one extra left hand, and it's gonna land on the uh of two. So our rhythm is gonna become one and two and a uh three and four and. And this left hand is landing between the fourth and fifth right hand of your groove. Just the hands. Now if you find that rhythm quite difficult to play at first, try zooming in to just a very small part of the beat and just try playing the two and a, uh, which is both hands right left. Two and a. Uh or quite appropriately, red pepper. Once you feel comfortable with the rhythm, you can begin to add in the other elements of the groove, including those bass drums, which still are landing in the same place of beat one and the end of three. Do be careful that when you reintroduce those bass drums that your kick isn't a little bit cheeky and tries to land on three rather than the and of three. Sometimes that does tend to happen when students are first learning to play this groove. 
Once you've got it down though, you've now got a really useful and great groove to add to your vocabulary. And you're not actually a million miles away from what Chad Smith plays on the song Scar Tissue. <laughs> Now this will sound quite strange, but I actually want you to forget what we just learned at stage two. We're gonna take that left hand, pop it on the shelf and come back for it in stage four, because we're gonna look at another left hand that's being added to our groove. This one is landing on the E of three. So between our fifth and sixth hi-hat. It's gonna give us the rhythm of one and two and three E and four and. Just the hands would be this. Again, if you're struggling with this rhythm, the best thing to do is to zoom in and look at a smaller part of the groove. I'd suggest going from just the second half. So that's just the three E and four and. Right, left, right, both right. And then at this stage, I'd actually practice putting the bass drum on the end of three. So you've got right, left, and then a right hand with the bass drum before your both hands together and your final right hand. So just the second half of the groove. Then we can zoom back out and add in the other elements, including the bass drum that lands on one. You'll probably find the most difficult thing about playing this one is not playing the rhythm that you learned in stage two. Remember that one's on the shelf and we're gonna get it in just a second, but really try and focus on being able to have the control to choose when the left hand is going in between the right. That's the biggest challenge with this groove, is gaining that control and you choosing what rhythm you're playing rather than the rhythm choosing you. If you can get that down, I think you're ready to move on to the next stage. But it's worth pointing out that this is probably a, a phrase and a rhythm that we hear Chad Smith play a lot when he moves from the verse of a song into the chorus. It's often kind of preceding a drum feel that moves from one part of the song to another. However, I also find that if you take your right hand from the hi-hat and play the same groove, but just with your right hand on the floor tom instead, you start to create the foundation of the pattern that we hear in the verses of By The Way. It's not exactly the same pattern, but it's definitely gonna be a great launching point to start you off in learning that song as well. Time to head back to that shelf and grab the beat that we learned in stage two and combine it with the rhythm that you just learned in stage three. This is gonna give us a new rhythm of one and two and a three E and four and. Just the hands. Just like we did with the other stages, if we want to make the beat a little bit smaller, obviously it is quite a long rhythm, but we could zoom into it a little bit more and just try playing the and a three E and four. Right, left, right, left, right, both. I'd also suggest adding in the bass drum as well, which is still landing on the and of three. Right, left, right, left, right and bass drum together, both hands and a three E bass four. And with the beginning of the groove as well. Now at this point, we're gonna go one step further and add in another left hand. And this one is gonna land right at the end of the groove. So after the last right hand, it's gonna land on the uh of four, giving us a complete rhythm of one and two 
and de, three, e, and four, and a. Uh. So it's right at the end. Cheeky little left hand. If you remember back to stage two when we were learning the red pepper rhythm, that was the both right left, it's the same rhythm being used here, except rather than landing on two, it's landing on four. And that left hand connects one end of the bar to the next one. So when you start to loop it, you'll really start to hear how effective that extra left hand is in making the song and making the beat groove more. This is essentially also exactly the same groove you hear Chad Smith play in the song Californication. However, you might notice there's more kind of dynamic control going on within the groove, which is good because that's where we're headed next. Now at this point it's worth congratulating yourself because you now have the pattern that Chad Smith plays in the verses of Black Summer, hopefully down. However, we've got to change a couple of things to make them sound more Chad Smith-like and get us closer to that sound we have on the song. One of those things we have to think about are ghost notes. Now a ghost note is when you play a note quieter than you normally would. And in context to our groove, all those left hands that we've been adding in that land in between the right hand are going to be ghost noted. Just the left hands, not the right ones. The left hands that you play at the same time as the right hand should remain at the same velocity. So it means we're gonna go from our groove sounding like this. To this. As well as those ghost notes, we need to move our right hand to a different part of the drum kit. We've been practicing on the hi-hat so far, but I need you to move your right hand over to the ride cymbal where Chad Smith plays this beat in the song. Now when you're playing that ride cymbal, you also need to be quite careful of what velocity your right hand is being played at. You want them all to be the same and be as consistent as possible. This is actually more challenging than you might think. Your left hand is varying its volume all the time with the ghost notes and the normal strokes on the snare, whilst your right hand has to stay the same. So take some time to really sort out your volumes and make sure you're not too loud with the right hand and that your hands aren't all dipping when you're playing the ghost notes. What tends to happen is we kind of, when we're playing quieter notes with the left hand, all of our sounding of our drum kit goes down and goes back up again. We don't want that. It's just the left hand that's moving up and down. And hopefully from taking this step by step, we're gonna have that dynamic control of those different rhythms that we've been learning in our different stages. Now I think that approach of ghosting the notes in between your right hand is quite obvious on a song like Californication. However, if you listen to something like Can't Stop, where Chad Smith is essentially doing a very similar idea, but in a much different kind of way. He's messing around with lots of the different volumes of the notes in between, and also, it's the kind of thing where the ghost note maybe isn't as obviously there, but because it is there, it really makes the beat groove. So I really spent some time and playing along with different Chili Pepper songs and seeing what happens when you ghost different notes from that pattern that you've learned in today's lesson. The last step is to introduce a drag rudiment to the groove, which is kind of a lesson within itself, but it's one you're definitely gonna wanna get down because it is vintage Chad Smith. Now the way in which you play a drag rudiment is that you play two grace notes on the same hand followed by an accented note on the opposite hand. The grace notes should be ghosted and the opposite hand should be nice and loud. So you can play this either left, left, right or right, right, left and you can try practicing just going between those two forms to begin with. Really take your time and making sure you have that dynamic difference between the grace notes and the accented note. And once you've got it slowly, start to try and see if you can speed things up.
You'll probably find that as you're speeding up, you tend to buzz those grace notes rather than play them as two individual hits. Now, an important thing to remember about a drag rudiment is that it's the accented note which determines whether you're playing a right-handed drag or a left-handed drag. So if you play left, left, right, accent on the right, it's a right-handed drag. And if you play right, right, left, accent on the left, it's a left-handed drag. And in this next exercise, we're gonna be using the right-handed drag. Because once you feel comfortable with that, I want you to see if you can play a bar of eighth notes on the ride. But we're gonna begin with a drag on one. So we get left, left one, and two, and three, and four, and left, left one, and two, and three, and four, and. Next, we're gonna see if we can then bring in the back beats of our snare that land on two and four. So these are the snare hits that land at the same time from your groove. This has now given us a beat structure that we can bring in all the elements we've been learning in this lesson. And what we're actually gonna do is transform that very last left hand that we added in in stage four to be a drag instead. So we're, instead of playing one and two and a three e and four and a, uh, that very last a uh, is gonna be two grace notes, which is gonna create this kind of effect. Now up to speed and adding in those ghost notes as well. As well as that drag, occasionally you'll also hear Chad Smith use another form of drag rudiment to start off a drum beat. And the same kind of thing happens in Black Summer. For this one, we're gonna actually add another note to our original drag rudiment. So now, rather than playing right, right, left, or left, left, right, we're gonna follow that with another 16th note with the opposite hand. So if I'm playing a right-handed drag, that's now gonna become left, left, right, left. Opposite to that is gonna be right, right, left, right. It's worth practicing both. In Black Summer, we're gonna kick off the rudiment with the left-handed version of that drag rudiment. So that's the right, right, left, right version of things. The additional right hand that we've now brought in, that's actually gonna move from the snare drum to the ride cymbal, and if you can, try and hit the bass drum at the same time. That right hand and the bass drum together is actually the first beat of your bar, and then you can carry on playing the groove that hopefully you've learned from watching this lesson today. Now you hear Chad Smith use buzzes and drags in so many different Chili Pepper songs, but for me, Danny California is the one. I really hope that from watching this video, you have a better idea of how to play Black Summer by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And hopefully I've given you a bit of a starting point and some things to look towards and how you can expand things even further and learn even more songs from the Chili Peppers. Let me know how you're getting along in the comments. And also let me know in the comments, what's your favorite ever Chad Smith groove that he's played in a Red Hot Chili Peppers song? And would you like to see me break it down like I did with Black Summer today? If you could go ahead and press the like button on this video, that would be amazing. And why not subscribe to the channel for more video lessons just like this one. If you've enjoyed yourself, you can go even a step further and perhaps check out my website where I'm gonna be dropping some additional learning packs and more video lessons there as well. Until next time though, my name's Will and I'll see you again soon.